dear students welcome to all of you today we are here to discuss nucleolus the nucleolus was first described in 1781 by felice fontana who noted its occurrence in the slime of an eel and reported it in a simple remark in his work on the venom of vipers the name nucleolus was coined by gabriel gustav valentin in 1839 who notes that most cells had a secondary nucleus or a nucleus within a nucleus some 100 years after fontana's discovery the nucleolus became one of the first intracellular structures to be described in detail the variability of both size and number of nuclei and their disappearance and reappearance at mitosis was described these remarkable conclusions still hold true today some of the most important scientific contributions came as late as early 20th century when heat is related the formation of nucleoli with chromosome location and barbara maclin talk studied x-ray induced chromosomal rearrangements heat is in 1931 observed a direct correlation between the number and lengths of secondary constructions that is regions of mitotic chromosomes with a thin appearance where dna could not be detected by the fulgen reaction and the number and size of nucleoli maclin talk suggested that the chromatin at the secondary construction was the nucleolar organizing element now termed nucleolar organizing region or in abbreviated form nor because this region alone without the original secondary construction was able to give rise to a separate nucleolus these data definitely established the nucleolus as a genetically determined element brecht and kaspersen and schultz demonstrated that nucleoli are enriched in rna the nucleolus is a large distinct spheroidal subcompartment of the nucleus of eukaryote cells that is the site of ribosomal rna or rrna synthesis and assembly of ribosomal subunits the nucleolus referred to as non membranous organelle or nuclear membraneless organelle in the broader sense of the term organelle however nucleoli lack a membrane and thus are not organelles in the more technical sense of structures that are separately enclosed within their own lipid membrane most plant and animal cells have one or more nucleoli but some cell types do not have any the nucleoli are specific nuclear domains present in all eukaryotic cells the nucleolus is the ribosome factory of the cell in cycling cells nucleoli assemble at the exit from mitosis they are functionally active throughout interphase and they disassemble at the beginning of mitosis the nucleolus is the site where different steps of 
ribosome biogenesis or group it together that is transcription of ribosomal genes or DNAs, maturation, processing of ribosomal RNAs and assembly of rRNAs with ribosomal protein. It was proposed that the nucleolus is an organelle formed by the act of building a ribosome. Indeed, the organization and size of nucleolus is directly related to ribosome production. Consequently, the size of nucleolus is a diagnostic marker of highly proliferative cancer cells. The variability of the nuclear organization has been intensively examined in different biological contexts such as proliferation, differentiation, development and disease. The comparison of the nuclear organization in evolutionary terms revealed both the conservation in the basic build building blocks and a higher complexity in modern eukaryotes. The nucleolus constitutes a model to understand the principles of the organization of nuclear domains, the dynamics of protein trafficking as well as the interplay between nuclear bodies dedicated to related functions such as cudgel body, promyelocytic leukemia body and nuclear speckles. Throughout the past 50 years, nuclear complexity was deciphered using multiple approaches. Thus, it was discovered that ribonucleoproteins RNPs in addition to ribosomal subunits are assembled or processed in the nucleolus. The best example is the nuclear assembly proposed for the signal recognition particle. In plant cells, but not in animal cells, nuclei have been implicated as sites of silencing RNA biogenesis. Today, the nucleolus is considered a multifunctional domain. Extra ribosomal functions assigned to the nucleolus include the involvement in cell cycle and cell proliferation control, stress sensing and tumor surveillance pathways, apoptosis, telomere formation, transfer RNA modifications, viral life cycle, etc. Now, structural organization of nucleolus. The nucleolus initially offered more hope for a meaningful interpretation of its architecture because it showed a clear structural heterogeneity that appeared related to its function. Aside from various kinds of associated condensed chromatin and nucleoplasmic like inclusions which are generally called nuclear vacuoles, the nucleolus shows three fairly distinct structural components. The two major components seen with conventional thin section electron microscopy are called dense fibrillar component DFC and granular component GC. Another component the fibrillar center material FC accounts for only a small fraction of the total nuclear volume. It has been proposed that this particular 
organization is only observed in higher eukaryotes and that it evolved from a bipartite organization with the transition from n amniotes to amniotes. Another structure identified within many nucleoli particularly in plants is a clear area in the center of the structure referred to as a nucleolar vacuole. The appearance of the nucleolar vacuole is subsequent to the output of preribosomes from nucleolus. These vacuoles might play a role in condensation and decondensation of the chromatin. Now, fibrillar center or FC. Fibrillar center is made up of network of fine 4 to 5 nanometer thick fibrils. The shape of a fibrillar center is roughly spherical with the diameter ranging from about 50 nanometers to 1 micrometer. The number and size of apses per nucleolus is variable and changes with the cellular activity and the need for ribosome production. Cells with lower cellular activity usually have fewer FC than others. Now, dense fibrillar component or DFC. Dense fibrillar component is also made up of very fine 3 to 5 nanometer and densely packed fibrils. DFCs usually surround FCs when they are present and form a meshwork. As this is particularly true for activated states, the amount of dense fibrillar component roughly reflects the nucleolar engagement in ribosome biogenesis. Sometimes this meshwork occupies large areas of the nucleolus, occasionally interspersed with small fibrillar components. During S phase of cell cycle, the increase in upstream binding factor UBF association may be due to the increase in its ability to compete with the histones for binding to the RDNA. Now, granular component or GC. The granular component appears to consist of small granules with a diameter of about 15 nanometers. They typically form a mass surrounding the fibrillar complexes and embed the FCs and DFC. Thus, a transition zone between DFC and GC that is granular component can be observed. Although the nucleolus is not membrane bound due to the presence of granular component, the border with the surrounding chromatin and nucleoplasm is usually distinct. Now, ribosomal DNA or RDNA. Ribosomal DNA is a set of tandemly repeated genes coding for preribosomal RNA because these genes have the ability to initiate the formation of nucleoli during interphase. These segments of the chromosomes are called nucleolus organizing regions or NORs. In the human genome, there are tandem repeats of the RDNA sequence on the short arm of each of the two copies of chromosomes 
13, 14, 15, 21 and 22. Now nucleolar proteins. The nucleolus contains many different proteins, only a few of which have been characterized in any detail. They include the proteins of the pre-ribosomes and those with specific nucleolar functions such as RNA polymerase 1, topoisomerases, methylases, nucleases, protein kinases and phosphatases. The nucleolus undergoes breakdown and uh, reformation during the cell cycle disappearing from the late prophase until telophase. At prophase, the irregularly shaped GC disappears first followed by DFC with various nucleolar proteins leaving the nucleolus in an apparently ordered progression. The nuclear organizing regions NORs at mitosis the secondary constrictions are ultrastructurally similar to the fibrillar centers in electron microscopic staining. Components such as RNA polymerase 1, topoisomerase 1 and UBF which are involved in transcription remain associated with the NORs in the condensed chromosomes. Whereas other components such as protein B23 are found around the periphery of all the chromosomes or dispersed throughout the cytoplasm. A nucleolar remnant often persists through mitosis remaining in the cytoplasm or associated with the chromosomes and ultimately disappears after nuclear envelope reformation. Reformation of the nucleolus often termed nucleologenesis takes place in two stages. First small round pre-nucleolar bodies PNBs are formed that contain various nucleolar proteins including fibrillarin B23 and nucleolin. Second, if transcription is initiated, the PNBs associate with transcriptionally active NORs to form the complete nucleolus. Furthermore, this process seems to be dependent on transcription by the appropriate polymerase. Now functions of nucleolus. The main nucleolus function is production of subunits which together form the ribosomes. The ribosomes are known to produce proteins and therefore nucleolus plays an indirect role in protein synthesis. Out of the total production of RNA that takes place in cells, nucleolus is involved in 50 percent of the RNA synthesis. This functionality of nucleolus is attributed to hundreds of R genes. Besides, recent research pointed out that nucleolus is also responsible for trafficking of various prominent small RNA species. Nucleolus helps them during their maturation process and route to their final cellular destination. Although nucleoli become invisible, every time during cell division, recent studies found that they involved in cell cycle regulation. A continuous chain between the nucleoplasm and the inner parts of the nucleolus exists throughout a network of nuclear channels. In this way macromolecules with a molecular weight up to 2000 kilodaltons are easily distributed 
throughout the nucleolus. The first clear proof of the function of the nucleolus came in mid 1960s when two groups showed that the organizer contained the genes coding for the major 28S and 18S ribosomal RNAs. Ritosa Spiegelman 1965 working with drosophila genotypes carrying different numbers of organizers demonstrated a correlated difference in the numbers of genes for ribosomal RNA. Now, ribosomal subunit assembly. The assembly of ribosomal subunits takes place in the following manner. Transcription of rRNA precursor molecule from DNA takes place in the nucleolus. This long rRNA precursor molecule is processed and mature RNAs are formed. The next step after formation of mature RNAs is that of carrying out the packaging. These RNAs are packaged with certain specific forms of proteins and finally, the ribosomal units are formed. These ribosomal units can vary in size. The process of translation requires ribosomal subunits as the raw material. The ribosomes subunits which are assembled get transported to the cell cytoplasm that is out of the nucleolus and then participate in the process of translation or protein synthesis. The nucleoli are known to play an important role in mRNA biogenesis. The nucleolus is also involved in RNA metabolism. Events such as telomerase, RNP and assembly of signal recognition particle are known to be important. Nucleolus is also involved in these RNP assembly events. Now, nucleolus organizing region. The nucleolus organizing region or NOR is a region in which formation of nucleolus takes place around chromosomes. After the division of nucleus, this region gets associated with the nucleus. Several copies of genes of ribosomal RNAs are contained in this area. The structure and functioning of nucleolus is far more complicated than what has been studied till date. Dear students, this is all about nucleolus. In this discussion, we have learnt about structure and organization of nucleolus. We have also deliberated on various components of nucleolus and their functional aspect. Thank you very much. God bless you.